Truth Espresso, episode 287. Face it, we all would rather sleep in this morning. <sighs> That's why God gave us espresso, to kickstart our zombified corpses into hyperdrive. <laughs> and now, giving your mind and soul the morning shot of truth it craves. <sighs> this is Truth Espresso with Daniel Minnick. Hello there friends, family, foes, and lurkers alike. This is your host, Daniel Minnick, and I'm going solo again in this episode. My sweet, beautiful wife and co-host Chelsea is up in the mountains again, helping out uh, women, contracting with a pregnancy center up there once a month. And so this is the weekend in which she does that. And so it's another tiring weekend for her. And it's another weekend for me to try to get some things done around the house. I usually make a lot of food to help out for the next few days for when my wife and the kids get back down from the mountains. And so, yeah, I don't chill at all while they're gone for Friday and Saturday. I spend most of the time trying to get a lot of things done, including recording an episode of Truth Espresso. And so I just want to talk a little bit in this episode about the crusade against human nature. Consider this a little bit of a rant about a lot of the craziness that we see going on today and that it seems like we're expected to treat all this craziness as if it's just normal progression or that revolutionary ideas about the purpose of humanity or things like oppression and oppressors and whatever the whims are of those who are in power that somehow we're supposed to take shockingly different things and just go with the flow as if our supposed betters know better than we do about how to run a society and especially those of us who are faithful christians who are just trying to do the right thing we're trying to live in this crazy world Work hard, raise a family, attend church, worship God, serve God, serve our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and an economy that ever squeezes harder on us as we work hard to pay for higher grocery bills and higher prices for gas at the pump, that somehow we're supposed to imbibe the strange theories of the academics in ivory towers and of the politicians who have these lofty, grandiose goals of reshaping the world in their own image and after their likeness. And this episode is to recognize the crusade against human nature because I want to start off with uh, some verses from the Word of God that talk about and recognize that there is such a thing as human nature. And I don't just mean the bad things that people do and we say, oh, that's just being human. I'm talking about positive things. I'm talking about recognizing that there's an order in the world, that there is design, that there is something in accord with how God has made us to function, and that we recognize it and that we don't have to overanalyze things. There's such a thing as intuition. And the Word of God comports with that. We can just plain know without having to do a case study on it to recognize some truth. We can merely use our human intuition. And there are a few verses from Scripture. The Scriptures use the word phusis, the Greek word for nature, in a way that recognizes the design and the intuitions that people have whereby they can do good things or they recognize what should be and what should not be. So the Apostle Paul said in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 14, Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? And then he proceeds to talk about how the long hair is a glory for the woman. Now, this episode is not talking about long hair. I'm not really going to go into that. There's nothing that Scripture says about what constitutes long hair versus short hair. There's no measurement given. I think it has to do with long hair pertaining to 
what you're trying to communicate by having longer hair. Like if a man has long hair with the intent to look a certain way, that would make him look less of a man than if he had short hair, or if he's trying to push a certain cultural perception that isn't really intuitive. The Apostle Paul is appealing to nature here. Often in Greek and in Jewish culture, Men would generally have shorter hair, and women would generally have longer hair. The Jew and the Greek, in general, would think that way. And Now, some cultures, men might have longer hair than other cultures. Once again, we're not talking about a specific cutoff point, no pun intended. We're talking about just what are you communicating and what does the intuitive mind recognize between short hair and long hair by identity and category. And the point that I'm trying to get at is the Apostle Paul's use of nature teaching you. Now, it doesn't mean observing nature by looking at rocks and trees and streams and mountains, nor is he talking about looking at animals and getting example from them. Of course, there is nothing from nature in that sense that we could even glean the idea of short hair on men and longer hair on women. He's saying that nature just Us being humans and going according to human intuition, we recognize that there's such a thing as a distinction between men and women, and there are things that, in general, we would prefer to see more often in men and more often attributed to women. There is this distinction, and it's nature, and it's intuition. The the Word of God recognizes this concept that there's such a thing as human nature that can teach us things, or that we can see, well, duh, human nature says this, so why would we try to oppose human nature? The Apostle Paul also says in Romans 2.14, For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, do by nature the things contained in the law, these, having not the law, are a law unto themselves. Now, he's talking about the pagan Gentiles, and he's talking about the fact that they had not the law, the written law, the oracles of God that he says in in Romans chapter 3, the next chapter. Later on in Romans chapter 2, he's saying the Jews rest in the law and they claim to obey the law, but, you know, they might violate things that they claim to obey and stuff. But the point is, he's saying the Gentiles, the pagan Gentiles, they did not have this special revelation from God, but they had the general revelation. So even though they didn't have the oracles of God given to them on the stone tablets or written by the prophets, they do by nature the things contained in the law such that even pagan Gentiles would still have law codes that would have punishments for things like stealing and lying and adultery and murder. Now, there could be corruption in high places and people would be legally allowed to get away with stuff like that if they had power. But generally, no one claimed that the law code was supposed to be in such a way that anyone had a right to do these things. They recognized by nature, by human intuition, that you don't do things like steal and kill and destroy and that harming someone else, that there's some concept of the general equity of humanity and that laws against stealing and murdering and lying and adultery and stuff like that are necessary and right. So nature, intuition, teaches us. That's human nature. The Apostle Paul recognizes this human nature that leads people to recognize certain truths. And then we have Romans chapter 1, the previous chapter, where Paul talks about nature and people doing things against nature. So Romans chapter 1, verses 24 through 27, the Apostle Paul says, Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. 
And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. Now I'm not going to go into detail about what he's talking about here, but the natural, the intuition, the human nature recognition, we all know intuitively that the design of humanity according to even how God designed our bodies and how biology works is that we're supposed to recognize the order and design that you have a man and a woman and they get married and they produce children that could be boys or girls and they grow up to be men and women and they likewise find a spouse, a man with a woman and a woman with a man and they get married and they'll have children and so on. And that the Apostle Paul says that God gives up some people who, because they become idolaters and they worship the creation over the creator, they know that God is the creator, but they want to lift themselves up and they think they're wise, but they become fools. And so since they're not retaining the knowledge of God and they want to deify themselves, they want to treat creation itself as an end unto itself and not honor the creator that therefore God can give them up and let them go to their base desires, to their vile affections, and they can take them to the extremes and they will go against nature, as the Apostle Paul says. That the women changed the natural use, which is against nature, and the men leaving the natural use of the woman and so on. So there's such a thing as human nature and the way human nature is supposed to work. But we have a culture today, especially from the top down, especially ideas coming from elites and politicians and academians who they don't want to accept the fact that there's such a thing as human nature by design. There are some things that we should be able to simply take for granted that God has designed, and that works, and that's necessary for flourishing. And basically, they want to overanalyze things and always question the intuitions of their own minds and think, where did I get this intuition? It can't be from God, of course. It must come from some other source. It must come from the past, because if society had been doing this for a while, where did they get it from? It must have been imposed on them from some source. Not God, of course, but some humans with power, you see. And so, why would someone impose these ideas on other people if they didn't have power, and, if, and it had to have been reasons for them to exercise their own power and to control other human beings? And so, we are perfectly justified to question these norms, to question these intuitions, to question the idea of human nature. And then reformulate and think that maybe there's such a thing as being truly human without acquiescing to the intuitiveness of human nature. And so let us reinvent the wheel. And that has seemed to lead to all kinds of strange things. We have now men claiming to be women, women claiming to be men. And we have medical establishments making bank off of convincing children to undergo prescriptions and surgeries. And somehow this is a righteous cause for them while well, they make lots of money in the process and, and heaven help those children if they somehow come to grips with what they have allowed happen to them or even have been pressured into doing. And then it's irreversible. And it seems like things like lying and cheating and stealing and murdering are no longer universally accepted as wrong, as applicable to everyone. Because somehow it's just, there's no intuition, there's no human nature. There's only some humans with power imposing ideas on other humans to subjugate them. So somehow we have to liberate humanity from past ideas. Even though we all recognize that things like don't kill, don't lie, don't steal, don't commit adultery are just plain true. We can rationalize them. We can think through just why they're true. 
But we don't have to rationalize and wonder if they're true. We know that they're true. That's the human nature. That's the imago dei. That's the image of God that God has created us to recognize. And it seems like in the news you have all kinds of, like every day we seem to be shocked at just how strange people will act, especially those with influence. Now, you know, you have the most popular candidate for president running and he's giving a speech and then he says something about if he's not elected, there could be a bloodbath and anyone can listen to what he had said in context and know exactly what he's talking about. And so the intuitive, the human nature thing, recognizing what an honest person would assess from that should say, but then you have politicians, you have pundits on news channels trying to take it out of context, ignoring it, and even saying that the American people are not stupid. They know what he meant when, yeah, if we listen to it, we know exactly what he meant, and it's not what you're trying to portray. And it's obvious to us when we look at that and we see that they're trying to twist things. And it's like, I just want to say, look, If you guys know what the truth is, then be honest. What is your game here? Intuitively, according to the human nature that God gave you, just be honest. But no, it's time to lie. It's time to cheat. It's time to twist things with abandon and with absolute impunity. Why? Because the only thing that matters is power and control and not even being honest with words. We have things like a squatter in a New York house, and there's a a woman who inherited this house that's worth about a million dollars from her parents who had passed away, and she was in the process of selling it. And then there's a man who was squatting in the house and she found out about it and she's trying to get the man ejected from the house because she's the legal owner with the title and she's even trying to sell it and hadn't secured uh, any kind of sale yet. But then she gets arrested for changing the locks on it. Why? Because of some strange squatter laws. That because the man claimed that he had a bills from work he was going to do doing on the house, when you know for sure he fabricated that just so he can take advantage of the squatter laws because he was obviously doing that with what he was saying to the reporter there. This is what the law is. She's got to take me to court and so on. And I have the 30 days. And so I'm going to use whatever it takes to exploit the laws. That's basically what he was saying. Now we know. And of course, the police end up cuffing the woman, the the real owner of the home, and arresting her because she dared change the locks in her house. I mean, what if she thought this man was threatening her? Like, we recognize that even the Bible talks about property rights. It says, thou shalt not steal. It also says, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, which this man was obviously doing. And it also says, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. And no one reading these verses could dispute the plain obviousness of such truth. It's just plain profound truth. And a society can't function unless we recognize that that is truth and we all know that it is by intuition. And then you have police arresting an actual homeowner for trying to protect her home from a man who's trying to exploit it. They know what's right. She knows what's right. The man knows what's right. No one's confused. We all know that everyone there knows what the truth is. It should make us think, are these laws in any way intuitive or are they activist? Are they trying to promote something that isn't human nature for a specific purpose to advantage some people against others rather than having laws that reflect the intuitiveness, the general equity of God's laws according to human nature that we all recognize? 
And we have that uh, scene, I don't know if you've seen the video about the Texas National Guard trying to, uh, they're preparing for migrants that are just breaking through the razor wire on the wall there, and they're legally helpless to try to do anything to prevent them. They can't defend anything if they so much as lift a finger against them, then they would get in trouble. But we know this is ridiculous because the Bible does recognize property and boundaries, just like you wouldn't want someone breaking through your door into your house. It's the same with a country. You have your house. You don't want anyone breaking into your house. And if you live in a village or a community, you don't want anyone breaking into that who's unauthorized and trying to exploit other people's property. You don't want anyone breaking into a city. You don't want anyone breaking across the border of a country. If they're taking things, that's not intuitive. That is not human nature. But we're being forced to accept the idea that what we intuitively recognize by design as human nature, that somehow we have to question that. And the Bible says in Hosea 5.10, the princes of Judah were like them that remove the bound or remove the border. Therefore, I will pour out my wrath upon them like water. So the princes of Judah. So we have even in the Bible this idea that the government, the princes of the tribe of Judah there were trying to remove or change the boundaries, the borders. And don't we see that today? The Bible recognizes it, and we all recognize truth here. But we have to pretend that what we know is truth is not truth. For the ideas of the world, for those who recognize the design of human nature and that the laws of God are simple and necessary for a thriving and prosperous society, God's laws are not hard to follow. If you're a God-fearing person, if you're a Christian who believes the gospel, and you're just living your life in your family, trying to take care of your family, trying to work hard to put food on the table and raise your children up uh, to be good adults and citizens and so on, laws that you like you see in the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, and thou shalt not covet, are not grievous. And the Apostle John says in 1 John 5, 3, for this is the love of God that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. There's nothing grievous for someone who's not trying to aggress against anyone who doesn't have this imposed, deconstructed idea of Marxism or or social Marxism or the idea that we always have to look for the oppressors and the oppressed and try to revolutionize anything that would be intuitive general equity. It doesn't matter who kills whom. If it's not self-defense, if it's just premeditated murder, we all intuitively recognize that it's wrong. If someone is violating the property rights of someone else, we deep down inside, we recognize the intuitiveness and the human nature that that's wrong. It doesn't matter how much someone wants the property of another person. We realize that, hey, if you want property, you either have to work for it, or if you're in desperate need, someone would be charitable enough to give it to you. But no one has a legal claim to take something from someone else. We intuitively recognize that. How is your flame of truth, Christian? Is it burning bright? Hi, I'm Rebecca Bershwinger, creator and host of One Little Candle, a weekly podcast dedicated to encouraging, empowering, and equipping believers to be the light that God has called us to be, so that we may pass down undefiled the truth of God's infallible word to the next generation. So join me and light your own little corner of the world. You can listen to One Little Candle on all major podcast platforms or at christianpodcastcommunity.org. Human nature 
as being created in the image of God, recognizes good and evil. We recognize it intuitively. But we also recognize that because of the fall, we have the draw toward following base desires. And the powers that be want to direct people to follow their base desires over their intuitive recognition of human nature, which comports with the laws of God, the simple intuitive laws, such as don't kill or steal or lie or commit adultery or covet. We know thou shalt not kill is true and just, but we can face the temptation to think about harming someone who has said something we don't like. I'm sure most people have felt like someone said something hurtful. We might picture in our mind, oh, the idea of just wanting to like slap or or punch or like, you know, you just, you, you picture that in your mind, even though your intuitive human nature and sense of justice would say that you don't do those things. So you have the effect of the fall on us with base desires, but you also still have the image of God and the recognition of the intuitiveness of the human nature of the laws that God has designed. We know thou shalt not commit adultery is true and just, but we can face the temptation to consider the immediate gratification of a self-centered licentious lifestyle. Those base desires that would lead people away from the commitment and the honesty and the sacrifice of being a good spouse. Base desires versus the recognition of what we all know is true and just, and that's commitment in marriage. But we have the philosophy from the powers that be that we have to deconstruct things like marriage and family and self-sacrifice and commitment and taming our base desires. As the Apostle Paul talks about our body as a temple and saying that we have to crucify the affections and lusts. We know thou shalt not steal is true and just, but we can face the temptation to take something we want from someone else. In fact, we may even try to rationalize in our own heads. Well, hey, Bob here is well off and I'm not. It's not fair. In fact, he doesn't appreciate this thing as much as I would. Why shouldn't I have it and he not? He doesn't deserve it. I'm sure we've all thought that, at the very least, as we were kids and having to learn to mature, but believe you me, plenty of adults will still struggle with that, will struggle with jealousy and envy towards other people who have things that we don't. But we recognize thou shalt not steal is true and just. It's human nature. It's the image of God. It's intuitive to know that it's wrong to steal even if we can rationalize violating that according to our sense of immediate gratification and fairness. We all know that thou shalt not bear false witness is true and just, but we can face the temptation from our fallen nature for how we could benefit ourselves and how we can avoid consequences for our actions if we just lie about them. And especially in the context of bearing false witness against other people, Any envy or jealousy, any contempt becomes justification for lying. But that's our base desires. We all know that lying is intuitively wrong according to the human nature that God has designed us with. We know thou shalt not covet is true and just. And this is the big commandment. We already have thou shalt not steal. But now we have a separate command not even to entertain in our minds what could lead to theft. We should be content with what we have, and we should be content with what we can earn. The Bible clearly teaches that idea. There are some people who are going to have more than we will have. Some people might have talents and greater ability to be entrepreneurs and earn more money. And some people, you could even say, when evaluating the circumstances of life, they happen to be lucky. And some of us can be less fortunate or face trials or even 
illnesses and stuff that inhibit us from being able to enjoy the kind of life that other people would have materially. But regardless of it all, we still recognize intuitively, according to human nature, that thou shalt not covet is true and just. But our society faces a crusade against human nature. Our society wants to indoctrinate people away from what the Word of God clearly explains and away from what the Word of God is explaining according to intuition and human nature. The Word of God recognizes that there's such a thing as human nature, that even the people, even the nations, even the pagans can have a recognition of human nature without receiving the special revelation of the oracles of God. Even the general revelation tells us certain things. It tells us there's a distinction between men and women. It tells us that we ought not to kill, lie, steal, cheat, destroy, commit adultery, live licentious lifestyles, and covet. We all intuitively should recognize even that laws that are proposed that might seem to benefit us in particular, if we analyze it and say, well, this is satisfying coveting and it's stealing from some people to give to others and such that, hey, that's wrong. Are we following our base desires to our own benefit at the expense of other people? Or are we recognizing what we already know through intuition and human nature that God has given us, that lying, cheating, stealing, hurting people, and gaining at their expense is wrong? And so I recognize that this episode is kind of preaching to the choir. But if you as a listener of Truth Espresso are one of these people who are struggling with the constant indoctrination of the philosophies of this world that the Apostle Paul warns about being taken captive through philosophy and vain deceit and the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. If you're struggling with, I mean, somehow I know that certain things are true, but these arguments that, you know, we've got to look for helping the oppressed you know, even going against the intuition about what's just, but hey, the biggest thing is to help the oppressed and stuff. Well, there are ways to help the oppressed without overthrowing truth and justice, as we clearly have in the Word of God and given to us by the image of God and recognizing human nature and intuition. But just think of the gospel of Jesus Christ and how it crushes all the philosophies of the world. Jesus Christ, who was rich but for our sakes became poor, according to Hebrews. Not that he wanted some kind of government to redistribute wealth or such, but he willingly, voluntarily, of what he possessed by right, the riches of heaven, became incarnate for our sakes. He wasn't looking for benefiting himself at the expense of others. No, he gave up what he rightfully possessed for the divine mission of being the atoning sacrifice to pay for the sins of those who would believe, to purify for himself a people zealous for good deeds. Yes, the gospel of Jesus Christ crushes all the philosophies of this world. And of course, that's one reason why the powers that be with their philosophies despise the truth of Christianity. And so I want you all to take heart. It doesn't matter how hard things get. We need to embrace truth. We need to embrace the truth of the gospel and the truth of the law of God, and the truth of human nature, and the intuition that God has given us, and don't yield an inch on that as much as the world tries to come up with their supercharged new lingo to try to divide people where no division ought to be, and try to draw battle lines, and try to create civil wars with their agendas and weaponize and make lawfare against threats to their regimes and so on. The philosophies of this world cannot thrive. They cannot have a thriving society as God would intend, and so they can never last long. 
And so take heart that Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the Lamb of God and the Lion of the tribe of Judah, ultimately will win in the end as he will return and and he will bring the will of God that is done in heaven to earth and he will rule and reign. We must always keep that in the forefront of our minds as we, according to Jesus, occupy till he come. It is our goal to speak truth without apology as we await his return and not to be deceived into abandoning what we recognize as human nature, the image of God as he has designed to satisfy the philosophies of the world. And so I hope that you enjoyed this episode of Truth Spresso, that yes, as much as it was a rant on my part, it was also a call to encouragement and also as a call not to be weary in well-doing, for we shall reap if we faint not. And stay tuned for the next episode of Truth Spresso and God Bless. Thank you for waking up with Truth Espresso. Good morning, and God bless your day. Hey friends, Daniel Minnick here again. If you liked waking up to this episode of Truth Espresso, I would really appreciate it if you would rate it on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or whatever application you use to listen to Truth Espresso.